Well, I believe we are now uh, ready to move into our last uh, and third panel. Dora, can I please give a brief comment on this last uh, course, contribution, please? please? Thank you very please, much. Um, I'm very please. happy, Mohammed, that you said this because uh, I was involved indeed in the development of this theory of change and impact pathway. So the three priority areas in the UFM have been developed uh, along this instrument. And the reason why we are here um, today is to bring indeed in the North Africa EU Alliance um, the different stakeholders together also to design a TCIP uh, for food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture. I'm very happy that you mentioned that because there are many overlaps at least uh, in the use of the instruments but also in the um, uh, thematic priorities as you mentioned health, renewable energy and climate change. Um, I can inform you after the 7th of July, after this meeting, um, about these uh, TCIPs, because I assume then these documents are public. Uh, but now, unfortunately, I cannot share them with you. Thank you very much, Dara. Sorry for taking your time. Thank you, Stephen. And thank you so much for showing this, because I think this is important that uh, many we have many, many uh, players that we need to coordinate together. Thank you so much. Great. Well, uh, I see that we have all started working together. This is really very encouraging. Uh, uh, Mr. Mohsen Lardisi, who is going to moderate the third panel, are you in, Mohsen? Hi, Doro. Hello. Hello, hello. Yes, yeah, uh, to see you again. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, and you still have the screen of the third panel in front of you. I would oh. like to uh, just say a word about Mohsen because he's a dear friend and we are, uh, how, how do they say, partner in uh, mischief together because we are both in digital agriculture. Exactly. So uh, please, uh, Mohsen, go ahead with your panel. Uh, I believe that uh, we will probably start with the Dr. Mele Listra, not Dr. Ghada Khalil, who is a little bit late, and we're checking okay. with her on the phone. But please go ahead and, and kindly present yourself. Okay, thank you very much, Dora. Very happy to be with you uh, once again. Uh, it was uh, a pleasure to, to participate in, uh, like uh, two years ago, in uh, the uh, North African uh, North African U European Union Alliance uh, for uh, food. Uh, nutrition, security, and sustainable agriculture. And it was a pleasure to meet you, to meet all the, the, the committee. And I have a, a very um, deep uh, um, appreciation, appreciation of what we, we have discussed, what, what we have done. So for this panel, I'm happy to introduce one of the uh, topics that are very important. Uh, I will just uh, present myself. I'm a university professor and entrepreneur. I am also CTO. Uh, in agri data consulting, which is a startup fo focused on uh, digital digitalization agri uh, agriculture in Morocco, and I'm also an international consultant with many uh, uh, with many bodies like uh, IFC, uh, IBRD, and uh, uh, FAO. Uh, so I had the pleasure to introduce this third panel, which is about innovation, digitalization in agriculture uh, in Africa. And the main focus of this uh, panel is how we can pave the way for entrepreneurs, uh, agri-tech and food tech startups. Uh, that's why we have a, a very uh, interesting panel with a very high uh, yes, profile uh, participants. Uh, if you can just uh, present ah, for the, the panel, go to the slide with the panel uh, participants. So <clears throat> actually we have with us um, Sir Ghada Khalid, director of Forward 2030 Entrepreneurs Initiative in the Ministry of Planning of uh, Egypt. Uh, she'll be a little bit late, so we, we are going to go to the other participants and we'll go back to uh, Dr. Ghada. So we have also with us uh, engineer Ahmed Osman, uh, president of uh, International Council for Small Business, uh, Mr. Pascal Bonnet. Uh, head of uh, international relations in Sirad, uh, Dr. Uh, Adli Toma, who is uh, CEO and executive chairman uh, in an entrepreneurship 
huge entrepreneurial ecosystem we have in Egypt, uh, Germany, Africa. We have also uh, Ms. Dr. Magid Ghunayma, who is director of IHAB in Ancient uh, University, a hub for startup. Uh, Dr. Missy Kamal, who is a soil scientist and innovation expert. Uh, Dr. Uh, Miri Lisra, and we'll start with uh, Dr. Miri, who is agricultural counselor in the Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. And uh, maybe Mr. Ashraf Tarsim, who is country manager in the African Development Bank. Uh, we'll have also two experts with, uh, with us to give some focus and to have uh, some feedback from them. Um, Dr. Mahmoud Saqar. Uh, chairman of the Academy of Scientific Research and Developments in Egypt, and Dr. Raymond King. So let's start uh, for this subject to talk about the challenges and the opportunities uh, for agribusiness startups uh, in the region. What are the case studies uh, of agri-tech, food tech innovation hubs? What's the role of these startups in the implementation of research and innovation in uh, this sector? Uh, what's also the uh, some innov innovative funding schemas for agri-tech and food tech startups. So let's talk about all of this and uh, let's start with Dr. Mili Listra. Uh, Dr. Mili, are you with us? I am, thank you. Okay. Well, Dr. Mili Listra is the agricultural counselor in the Netherlands Embassy in Cairo. Uh, very happy to have you with us and the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Dora Fayani for, uh, for her leadership uh, and for her great convocative power in getting so many uh, bright, uh, bright minds, brilliant minds together. Uh, compliments for, for managing, uh, managing to do that. Uh, it's very impressive uh, to, to be here and to, listening, uh, to be listening uh, to all this wisdom. Uh, but I must make a confession, uh, Anata Ben, I'm a bit, bit tired uh, at this point in time. After a year uh, of uh, an academic year of uh, many Zooms, many webinars, many, many Zoominars, uh, also at the end of a, of a, of a very long and rich uh, a Zoominar, um, I, I got a bit rebellious um, and I took my prepared remarks uh, and I discarded them um, uh, to talk about something that is relevant to the topic, uh, but it's not directly on topic. Uh, and I'd like to talk about people. Uh, I'd look, like to talk about young people uh, because that is a way of, uh, of dealing with innovation, entrepreneurship uh, and digitalization. Um, I want to talk about people because this consortium and this partnership has the opportunity to connect people to people, uh, people from Europe to people from North Africa. Excuse me, Dr. Mili, just to, uh, to mention, uh, uh, five to bring, seven minutes. Yes. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Um, so it's, it's about connecting people, connecting neighbors, learning from each other, respecting each other, uh, and that is what, uh, what neighbors really, uh, really should do. I myself uh, have had uh, Uh, I don't know if we have lost Dr. Mili. Fertilizer Development Center. Um, to ah, work in ah, a, he's back. To, ah, I was gone. Yeah, it's a yes. connection problem. Go ahead. I, was, I had the opportunity to do bachelor's research in Togo uh, with the uh, IFDC, International Fertilizer Development Center. Uh, to go into the field and do a study on agricultural finance and fertilizer uh, and learn from farmers and learn from uh, uh, young uh, Togolese researchers uh, how uh, what, what the reality was uh, on the farmer level. Uh, during my master's phase, I had the opportunity to go to Kenya uh, to look at, uh, to work with IFDC, uh, I, uh, ILRI, the International Livestock Research Center, uh, to learn about community-based SETSI uh, prog uh, trapping programs, uh, uh, animal health. Um, as a social scientist, again, I had the opportunity to be in the field 
to learn from my peers, uh, to learn from my research assistant who, uh, assistants who taught me a lot about uh, local realities uh, and what made people do what they do. Now, I wish other people, uh, other young people uh, uh, who may be less fortunate than, than I was to also have that opportunity. Uh, and as a research consortium bringing to get, together universities uh, from Europe uh, with universities in North Africa, uh, this must be a, a platform to make such links, to make, make uh, such connections and to create such opportunities. Now, I also am very happy that we have this conversation uh, with EU friends. Um, we, the Dutch, uh, we have become a bit immodest, uh, as you've uh, as you've heard from some of our uh, some of our colleagues, uh, who said uh, said wonderful things about how we, uh, as the Netherlands, uh, have become a uh, an agricultural uh, the second exporter worldwide. Um, that has everything to do with uh, entrepreneurship and and innovation uh, but it also has something to do uh, with with learning and learning from each other and we in the netherlands uh, as we've learned from our european friends uh, with our system of producing more uh, to uh, to export more uh, that has been a different model than than some of our uh, colleagues within within the uh, eu have uh, have followed um, we have seen the boundaries of that uh, of that paradigm of producing more uh, and working on food security. Uh, at times, quality suffered, uh, and now we see that the environment is suffering. And then if you look at countries like Italy uh, and, uh, and France, uh, where they decided not to produce more at lower costs, uh, but to work on higher value, uh, look at terroir, uh, look at authenticity uh, and value of, uh, of, of products, now that is a wonderful lesson that we in the Netherlands now are, are learning and are trying to, uh, to apply. And such diversity, diversity of thought, uh, a diversity of innovative approaches, that is something very European. Uh, we, we all have the chance to try it our own way, uh, to learn from each other, uh, to share and to inspire each other uh, to become better. And I think these are lessons that we can share with our friends uh, in the Southern Mediterranean. Uh, for a country like Jordan, uh, where I'm accredited to as agricultural counselor, I feel that they shouldn't go and compete with Egypt uh, for who can produce uh, the cheapest uh, oranges. They have, don't have a chance uh, compared to, their, uh, to, to, uh, to the, the, the might of, uh, of Kamel's members at, uh, at Heia. Uh, they shouldn't compare, uh, uh, compete with, with Spain in producing the cheapest uh, olive oil. Now they should um, look for their own niche, uh, look for their own authenticity, uh, and look for the high value uh, crops that make sense within their agroecological, agro-touristic uh, opportunities. Um, so we have to look at what works locally, uh, what works uh, in practice, um, and that cannot be prescribed uh, by policymakers. It cannot be prescribed by national agricultural research uh, systems who, who, who research what is good for farmers. It cannot be prescribed by uh, government extension officers, even if they're there, uh, who tell farmers what they should do. No, we should learn from each other. We should create those opportunities for researchers to learn from and with farmers, uh, from and with agribusiness. Uh, from and with civil society. Uh, only if we have a agricultural knowledge and innovation system that supports farmers uh, in their innovation, uh, then they, they can do well and grow. Technology can add to that, but technology can never, digitalization can never replace getting the basics right. Good agricultural practices in the farm, farmer's fields farming as a business, let's get our basics right, and then technology can be a, a tool. But if we start with technology and pushing that technology transfer to farmers, well, we have seen many, many examples of that failing. Thank you for this opportunity, Dora. And uh, thanks, uh, thanks everyone for, for allowing me to share some of my thoughts with you. Thank you very much, Dr. Mili, for this uh, very inspirational uh, talk uh, and uh, for replacing 
the human uh, interaction and the human uh, values in the center of uh, any innovation in agriculture. It's not about technology, it's not about tools, it's mainly about how human can interact, can, can learn from each other. And thank you very much for this talk. Um, uh, let's go to the, our next uh, panelists. Uh, I don't know if uh, we have with us uh, Mr. Pascal Bonnet, Head of uh, International Relations in Sirat. Yes, good morning, I'm here. Do you hear me well? Yeah, very, very, very well. Thank you very much for joining us and the floor is yours. Thank you. Do you have my presentation or should I display it for, for you? I, I think we, we, do we do have the presentation or if you want to display it, it's, uh, it's your call. But we did receive it and we as always, and we are uploading it. Here it is. Can you see okay, thank it you. now? It's shared on the screen. Okay. The yes, perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, let me introduce myself very briefly. Uh, I'm Pascal Bonnet. I'm from, I'm from Syrah, France. Um, I'm a, a, a scientist in health geography by discipline. And I also lead uh, the international development of Digit Ag, Digital Agriculture uh, Converge, Convergence Laboratory, which I'll speak a little bit uh, of. So regarding the different uh, points that were highlighted for the discussion, I, I think the first point on relevance of the alliance uh, in research and innovation falls into the convergence of common problems to, to, to solve. And there are many of them. I just quote a, a, a couple of them, like uh, traceability and certification of product in food system and the trust on information disseminated or adaptation to climate change that we share uh, on all uh, uh, coast of the Mediterranean, for instance. Um, that will lead to the development of uh, what we call precision agriculture and uh, precision irrigation is, uh, is one example, but also to the development of digital agriculture, which is a bit different and I will speak about it. It's a bit broader. It goes beyond the plot up to the risk management uh, uh, like uh, you know, facing uh, um, um, climate change or, or diseases or pests. Um, so really, um, what should be the, the main feature? I think, again, uh, we should be in agreement in terms of common question to solve. There are question for the farmer himself, but are questions that we share between Europe and, and Africa in general and the Mediterranean, Maghreb and Mashrek in particular. And they are both in food systems and agricultural production systems, which are two different perimeters. Um, when addressing the role of the private sector, and I really include uh, farmers as the first pillar of the private sector, uh, I, I would like to promote uh, the synergization of uh, all roles. That means we need everyone. We need the creation of new consortium model in Europe. Uh, we call them digital innovation hubs, which encompasses a number of, of uh, private and public bodies. Uh, regarding the research, we need a research alliance between different disciplines and different labs. This is why we have created Digit Ag Convergence Lab, and the word convergence is particularly strong enough to be understood. Uh, it's a competence center with all different disciplines capable of responding partly to a common problem. And the third uh, uh, pillar of this uh, would be the development of multi-stakeholders innovation platforms and having a funding incentive, obviously. Uh, addressing challenges uh, of the private sector is not easy, but there, I can at least start from what I've written here. That means we have basically dualistic models of agriculture in Africa and somehow in Europe, and it was addressed by the, the present uh, uh, presenter. Uh, we have somehow the industrial agriculture, which is definitely oriented towards export, and it has an autonomous capacity to integrate digital innovation on its own, whether it's based on ag tech or food tech, the application are already on the market and just have to buy them. 
problem is not there. I think they are capable to do it alone. But the problem comes from family farming and the various institutions uh, they belong to and farmers organization, but including also the value chain uh, types of organization. Uh, and this is particularly um, with them that we have to target our effort. To my opinion, uh, we would need to develop ad hoc solution because their context is fairly different from uh, industrial agriculture, which is relatively standardized. Uh, so ad hoc solution means uh, design thinking, the development of new application and new digitization tools uh, with uh, uh, their involvement starting from the beginning and definitely a stronger support uh, uh, of the government, but not only the government, any funder uh, for a collective action to benefit uh, to what we call a responsible and inclusive digitization. So how to improve the contribution of research? So I'm, I'm really a researcher, so I should have the answer. We have at least three uh, main ideas. Um, research first, we uh, bring proof of concept, but we don't bring them to an extreme theoretical level. Uh, we need expertise and, and we also somehow uh, foster dialogue with uh, uh, the private sector in general. What we have to do is to foster these two channels dialogue with the private sector. It already happens with uh, many events in, in the digital era, like uh, farm hackathons, like uh, thesis program devoted to an alliance between the private sector and, 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 and the research, like the CIFRE program in France, or something new that we're trying to develop is we call them flash expertise. That means um, to boost a, a B2R uh, a model, business to research dialogue. Uh, for example, uh, this kind of scientific de data challenge um, will enhance data science for all. Um, that means many research experts can propose uh, scientific approaches uh, tools, uh, protocols to solve problems based on thematic questions that are identified by firms and farmers association. And a dialogue start from that as an illustration, for instance, for a, 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 an app we have developed, which is called Pick Free, which is an, uh, to assess uh, um, the yield of uh, trees of fruits on trees, for instance. The first question was really about data. How can we get enough data to assess production of mango trees in Orcap and one month ahead of the harvesting date? So how can we do that? So it took us uh, four, four years and a continuum of action um, to initiate research and finally end up with a TRL level six, seven uh, tool uh, ready for what we call industrialization. That means dissemination. Um, now, point six, most relevant output expected from the private sector. I think there are two different directions. Uh, we need uh, to develop new individualized services adapted to the local context of an individual farmer. In uh, health, we speak of e-medicine, that is precision medicine. Every farmer in Africa, every farmer in Africa is a, a farmer on his own with a very different context uh, uh, compared to his neighbor. Obviously not on all parameters and the uh, Nile Delta, for instance, is a very good example or they are common uh, aspect, uh, but uh, they, they also need a specialized, I would say, service. Um, but the second type of service we have to develop through digitization is a new common service and obviously the question of uh, <clears throat> market information, agroclimatic agro services uh, are a good example. And finally, uh, what should be the, the pillar of the Africa-Europe uh, um, uh, um, research consortium? I think there are uh, uh, several um, uh, layers into that. I think we need to exchange experience and this is through exchange of researcher. We do that uh, uh, with success in, in Digitag because it uh, promotes cross-fertilization and exchange of knowledge. This is nothing new really. Uh, research has always worked this way, but we need also new education curricula, curricula dedicated to agro uh, uh, ICT, uh, agrotech in French, and new observatory uh, platforms to observe the use of digital uh, in, in, in our regions. Another aspect is we need new type of grant, particularly PhD program um, uh, for uh, interdisciplinary thesis. 
We need an interdisciplinary research on its own, uh, bringing all specialists of technology and computer science, social science, very important too, and agronomy to work together. And we need the development of open science because obviously everything works if you have data and algorithm in open source or open data. This is the end of my presentation. I thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, Pascal. Thank you very much. Uh, very happy thank to you. Um, Mohsen, I believe that uh, engineer Ahmed Osman is now waiting to be, uh, to, in, to, to be invited to speak. Okay. In fact, well, he was to, to give his presentation before uh, Pascal, but uh, okay, engineer no Ahmed, if you are I'm on. I'm on, yes. Good. Okay. Uh, well, uh, of course, let, let's try to, to be as uh, short as possible. I think there are very nice ideas and uh, uh, thank you very much all for participating. Go ahead, the floor is yours, Mr. Ahmed Osman. Okay, thank you very much, Mohsen. Thank you, Laura, for inviting me to speak at this very uh, interesting uh, gathering of uh, uh, speakers in a very, very important topic. Uh, food and agribusiness is very important because uh, during this pandemic important to accelerate in the next uh, few years and definitely agribusiness is, uh, is one of the key sectors. I just want to give a general overview of SMEs and how they create, they create 95% of all firms in the global Dr. economy. Dr. Uh, Ahmed, can, is... can, you, can you raise your voice or come nearer the mic? The sound yeah, is, is not very better? good. It's better, yes. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Is this, okay, okay, thank you. So basically, uh, I think uh, uh, we all understand that innovating and digitizing agribusiness in Africa is a, a, a thing which will basically a, a, a revolutionize and increase the GDP of the whole continent. What we're looking for as, uh, you know, uh, entrepreneurs or small business owners is uh, that we still, despite the digitization and the digital revolution we're all going through, we still have a number of issues which need to be solved for uh, small business owners or inter entrepreneurs. Mainly, we have issues in access to information and data on uh, markets in general, whether in the continent of Africa or elsewhere, we still have a lack of information. The second, uh, obviously, issue is access to finance and investment. And I'm sure a lot of my colleagues who speak after me will have interventions in this aspect. But uh, a lot of entrepreneurs are in this pitfall of, do I go to an angel investor? Do I go to a VC? Do I go to debt uh, and the, the bank loans? They, there's still a, a lot of education which needs to happen and awareness to business owners on which a mechanism of funding and financing works best for their businesses. Uh, next issue is obviously access to markets. It's how I sell my products. Any product, any service uh, without a market to sell, is really, you know, uh, this is the key for any business uh, to grow numbers, to grow revenues. As long as now with all the digital revolutions happening, we want the, uh, a lot of, you know, uh, matchmaking events for uh, businesses, B2B, uh, cross-continent uh, initiatives, which can allow these small farmers, large farmers, producers, food producers to work and to sell their products uh, uh, through the digital revolution happening around us. During, especially during this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. I think what is very, very important that governments need to really be sensitive about is uh, there's a big uh, entrepreneurship uh, myth and promise that everyone who becomes a, an entrepreneur is going to become very, very rich very quickly, okay? And this uh, misconception and, uh, will basically, uh, you know, affect uh, a lot of young people uh, I, um, the first speaker, Dr. Mel from Netherlands, spoke about how important it is that we focus on people. Founders, if they're promised if by different governments in, on the continent and everywhere, if they're promised uh, you know, uh, quick success and quick wealth, and this doesn't actually happen in a business, they will become very, very, very upset. And, uh, and uh, they will become also very uh, negative towards uh, the societies they operate within. So I think we need to really uh, minimize what I call polit politization of entrepreneurship. It's becoming a political game. Everyone is promising, promising, promising that everyone's going to go get a bank loan 
you're going to become very rich and you're going to pay back the loan. It's not that easy. Globally, we understand that eight of eight out of ten startups fail. Uh, the average age of a successful founder is 38 years old. So giving promises to young people that they'll come out of college and become a business owner and a successful one is really a big lie. So we really need to be very, very frank and honest with the younger generations coming through that you know you need to be very you need to work very hard. You're gonna have a very tough time operating the business. There are days, black days more than the, be the better days. And there are lots of you know, days where you ha you'll have a, an issue with cash flow, cash management, et cetera. However, the promises and the trainings people are being presented with make people think that you have a laptop, you can sit in a, in a Starbucks and operate a business is not really the case, okay? The next thing is... This will be everything. And this is not the case. The next thing is that we need to deal with the efforts in the development of the business field. The development of the development, if it was an effect, it would be a small part of the business. If it was not sustainable or in order to finish the development, there will be a problem in the development. And... ...locally to run these initiatives and programs. So I think the interventions need to always look at uh, the correct method of exiting a country or a, a program that it always has to be sustained locally through local government, local funds, and, uh, and obviously with the engagement of private sector. Private sector is key, okay, and is very, very important in driving the economies of different countries. I don't want to take too long, but uh, just my final note is that any uh, you know, inv investment, whether small, micro, medium, or even technology investment in agribusiness, uh, uh, ticks a lot of boxes in the sustainable development goals, especially SDG number eight, which is decent work in economic growth. And I think that investing, uh, 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 impact investing in the agribusiness uh, has a lot of uh, benefits and pros, which will affect the African economy and the, the global economy in general in a positive way. I think and I hope I haven't taken too long. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Engineer uh, Ahmed Osman. Uh, very interesting. And uh, thank you also for, for uh, linking uh, the, the SDGs, but also for talking, uh, you know, frankly with the entrepreneurs, especially young entrepreneurs in the agribusiness and uh, saying that that's, that's, it's very important to know how to sustain all the work and all the funding that is done for uh, agriculture business. Thank you very much. Um, I'll um, go if if it's possible. I, I don't know if we have uh, with us Dr. Ghad Khalil yet, but if uh, not, I suggest yes. It's Dr. Adi Toma is with us, and I believe that he's uh, ready to come in. Uh, we have not managed to. Connect with Dr. Hada Khalil yet. So, okay. Dr. Uh, Adi Toma, I think that you're available now. Excuse me, um, uh, because Dr. Adli Toma. Yeah, yes, hello, everyone. Yes. Okay, thank you, Dr. Adli Toma, for joining us, and uh, uh, thank you for being with us in this uh, third panel. The floor is yours uh, to talk about uh, what you are doing in Gemini Africa and how we can pave the way for entrepreneurs in agri-tech and food tech. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. And thank you, Dr. Dara, for inviting uh, me in this uh, prominent uh, panel. Uh, actually, uh, I'm the chairman and the CEO of uh, Gemini Africa. Gemini Africa is the entrepreneurial arm of uh, Roscom Group. I'm as well a professor of practice at the University of Agora at the United States of America and the Worldwide Project Management uh, Consultant for uh, Schlumberger International. Uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm so glad and excited uh, to be uh, discussing this crucial and very important uh, topic uh, that we do believe in, in Gemini, that it's, it, it's in the future. Uh, having said that, it's important to shed uh, some light about what happened last year. I'm coming from uh, engineering background, masters and so on background, so I'm, I'm a tech, techie guy. But nevertheless, I do believe that when uh, the pandemic, corona, hit the whole world, uh, we have everyone is talking about uh, digital transformation, which is normal and understandable, but I, 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 I do believe that uh, 
we have to face the reality that we have to return to the basics, to the roots. And the basic is to have enough supplies for each and every country. Uh, the pandemic hits, you cannot, uh, you can face a situation where you cannot get any foods from outside the country, you cannot uh, import or export. So you have to be self-sufficient and it goes, of course, along with the SDG 0, zero 100. So, but uh, going back to the roots with the agriculture uh, should not be approached with the same approach we have done uh, 100, 200 years ago, but using the force industrial revolution which is the using the technology so when we merge uh, agriculture with technology it is agri-tech and this is uh, one of our beliefs in at uh, gemini africa we are very focused we, we work uh, in many countries in, uh, not only in egypt but as well in the african continent and we do believe that uh, we we have to put some efforts and uh, focus on some uh, businesses that are not that are not yet matured, like the, the agri tech and the real uh, need within the continent. That's why it's very important to make sure there is uh, open channels and communication and cooperation between Africa and uh, and Europe, and using the technology. And we do believe that uh, the, the 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 ones that have creative ideas, innovative ideas, they have the technology are the entrepreneurs. That's why the entrepreneurs are a key factor in, in this uh, equation, uh, which is food tech or, or uh, agri, uh, agri tech. Uh, we need, uh, we need, we do believe that we need to work on three aspects or three tracks, uh, or what we call it at uh, Gemini, three M's. The first M is money. So we need to work together, and this is an excellent uh, opportunity to, to discuss, is how to avail funds, how to avail money, how to avail investment, uh, since the investments for food and nutrition, uh, sustainability and security uh, mechanism is so uh, important. We can share platforms and offer partial solutions to, pro to problems uh, to the African countries, uh, but of course we have to avail uh, through our different relationships through our private sector governance and banking sector uh, some financial uh, solutions and facilities for not only for farmers for farmers for entrepreneurs for startups for SME uh, to be able to work to uh, have uh, to make some research and innovation uh, how to use the technology or to exploit the, the technology in the agriculture sector sector so the first, uh, first one is M. The second M with second track is mentorship. So we do believe that farmers, startups, entrepreneurs need training, need, need uh, knowledge transfer of use on the import, importance of the agribusiness and use of, uh, of the technology. The farmers, the, the, the new generation are techie as well and, and know quite well how to use the technology, but they, they need to have, to, to have more uh, information, more uh, capacity building, uh, more business uh, orientation, and so on and so uh, forth. So that, that's why we need to think about a, a program, a collaboration, collaborative program uh, for the continent with, uh, with you. The third track, the third M, is uh, mentorship. Uh, I do believe that we need to create a special model uh, for funding and as well for matchmaking, for creating opportunities to our startup community, to our uh, uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, so, for example, if I have a startup in, uh, in Niger or in Tanzania, offer uh, the, the, the solution or can I offer the service to another country in Europe, we have to have this, uh, this model. We have to have uh, this platform that can help the, the, the connection and what we call the uh, matchmaking. Uh, it's, it's kind of a newly created ecosystem to offer solution to existing uh, problems and pain points. And we will, we will use the startup entrepreneurs to offer such innovative and technological uh, solutions. Of course, we have some challenges like uh, the investment, education level of farmers, and how much they are willing to try to new innovative ideas. But we have uh, long-term financial sustainability and cooperation continuity that we do believe it is, it is here. There is a chance, there is an opportunity for everyone. There is opportunity for 
the, the, the governments, for private sectors, for startups, for entrepreneurs, uh, for, for everyone. But this is the, the it's, it's becoming crucial and uh, very important. The agri, agri tech, agri business, it's a, a great opportunity for creation of, uh, of jobs. Uh, so it is an important uh, factor in the social uh, part for uh, any uh, community uh, and any uh, country. Not to mention that uh, agri, agri tech, agri business, agri food uh, is crucial part or an active part of achieving the 2030 uh, UN vision. Uh, I don't, I don't want to take long. Maybe I have a, a, a lot to say, but let me stop here and uh, leave the, the floor for my colleagues. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Hadi. Uh, I, I really want um, sorry, Dora, I really want to thank all the participants uh, and panelists for for helping. But we still we still have one. Yes, we still know, have know, Prof Professor Ali Khuma with us, and who exactly. needs to come in because he's uh, short That's in easy. time, and we have two experts, and yes, we are really running out of time. I'm yeah. very very sorry Professor, for that. Professor Ali Khuma. Professor Ali Khuma who is a project officer in uh, uh, in, uh, in Prima, Prima Foundation in Spain. Yes. Uh, the floor is yours. And thank you very much. Uh, very happy to have you with us today. Thank you so much, uh, Marcin. Thank you so much, Dora, for your invitation. Uh, we're really very happy. And uh, it's a pleasure for Prima to be uh, invited to this very interesting uh, workshop. And I am sure that uh, we, we are in the region because Prima, Mediterranean region, we are exactly in the region, African and the uh, European Union. Let me um, please uh, uh, present myself first. Um, I, I share my screen, uh, please, because this is uh, different from what I have right now. Uh, yes, uh, uh, please. Uh, so, um, uh, 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 I am project officer at uh, Prima Foundation, uh, and I have a background of agriculture research for more than uh, 20 years in the in, in the region. And um, uh, I had before I had degree in um, agriculture, principal engineer, and then a master degree in the PFL uh, Switzerland, PhD in plant protection, and the professor in 2013. So I previously worked as director of the research at uh, IRISA. I is an institution of research agriculture in, uh, in Tunisia, and I managed several Mediterranean programs and also participated in several European projects aiming to reinforce the science and technology dialogue in the UMED region and uh, supporting, among other institutional capacity building and research networking. So, um, yeah, I published um, more or less 70 articles, yeah, were been copies four patents and two uh, national uh, awards and supervised, I supervised more than uh, 20 thesis uh, doctorate. So um, um, let me um, first start by just a very short introduction to Prima because uh, my friend Mohamed Chenewi, the uh, co-chair of Prima, I think he um, said something, but it is much more general. So the Prima Foundation, uh, the partnership um, of research innovation in the Mediterranean uh, area, is an Article 185 uh, initiative on 18 of October 2016. So this um, article uh, of the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union provides for the financial participation of the Union in research program undertaken by some member states. So what are the, uh, the, main, uh, the main objectives of PRIMA? So the main objectives of PRIMA are to develop knowledge and common uh, innovative solution for the agro system, agri-food system, water farming, uh, uh, food and nexus for sure, to make them sustainable and for the integrated way provision and management in the Mediterranean area, to make the system uh, and that provision and management more climate resilient, efficient, cost effective and environmentally and sustainably sustainable to contribute to solving our challenges, our common challenges, the Mediterranean, the water scarcity, the food security, nutrition, health, well-being, and uh, migration problems. Uh, Prima is based on the uh, principle of co-ownership, co-management, uh, co-funding, co-decision, uh, mutual interest, and shared uh, benefits. Uh, we are um, now in the fourth year of Prima, so Prima, as you know, 
from 18 to 28. But, but uh, I, I like to share with you that our dashboard is very briefly, uh, I will share with you uh, our dashboard right now. And I think it's very important to know ex what we are right now. Excuse me, excuse me, Dr. Uh, Dr. Professor Huma. Yes. We really have only two more minutes with you. I'm really Maximum, sorry. No, I, will, I will stop. Just the, our dashboard, 129 uh, funded projects, more than 1,000 uh, participating entities and we put 164 million of euro in the region. That's why that we have a good participation from the private sector. And I think this is very important uh, uh, for you, more, uh, around 80 SMEs in the region. So this is very, very uh, short introduction to Prima, but let me go to the points right now. The first point, the, the first point is, uh, uh, is that, can you see my, my, my screen? Yes. yes. Yes, uh, the first point is the relevance of the North African European Alliance for such innovation in food, food uh, nutrition security and sustainable agriculture. I think the first point, it is very, very relevant, but not only to, uh, to, to the, to the uh, food uh, nutrition security, but also to other, and I think uh, Mohamed Shanawi already, um, um, yeah, already said, is for energy, climate, and cha uh, climate change and health, I think. It's more relevant. The second point, I think that the, um, the, the alliance is very important to push the cooperation between research and innovation ecosystem and end user. And this is, I think, very important. And I hear when I said the end users, mainly the small farmers and SMEs, because small farmers and SMEs are the backbone of the economy of the region of Europe or also in Africa. So what are the main features? The main features, I think the first of all, it is the system of governance. And I think it is very important. The system of governance of research innovation should be more efficient in order to link the knowledge, the knowledge producer and the end users. It is very important to think about the governance. But if, you, if we would we like to see, to see this alliance uh, very efficient, we need to have uh, a good governance of research innovation. Second point, which is very important, because I, I have several experience, 2010, the problem of the national regulation. I think we should think how can we align our national regulation, because this is the, the main problem, the main problem in front of, the, uh, of, of, of having uh, an efficient alliance uh, uh, in, in the region. And the third point is we need to create a sectarian communication level for, for networking and uh, lobbying. What is the role of the private sector? I think we, I, I, I mentioned here three main important roles. First is the data. The data, because the private sector, they have the data, the, the smart farmers, the SMEs, all the private sector, they have the data. And we need to have the data for the monitoring and for several um, provision. And I think they have the, 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 the data and we need to rely on the data for a lot of studies. Second point, the priority. I think they, they know very well the, the priority of the research innovation in the Mediterranean. And we need to identify what are their, their priorities. The third point is the validation and valorization of the research and innovation result. I think the private sector is the, 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 the entities that can validate the results, but uh, not only the validation, but also the valorization and to push, to scale up what has been done at small scale. What are the challenges? I think uh, the, the challenges we have to produce uh, uh, more with less resources and less impact in the environment. But the second point with a link it to the, um, the digital in agriculture, I think the small farms and SMEs, we don't need a, a very big solution. We, we need frugal innovation, affordable sol solution to be easily adopted by the private sector. And I repeat it again here for the digital agriculture, I think if we will implement uh, huge in um, ICT, I think it will not be adopted by this by the small farmers and the SMEs. So here, once again, the frugal innovation. The third point is the open innovation. We don't need to work on the linear model because, as you know, we are working before on the linear body, the technology uh, push or the need push. And I think we need to work together. So the private sector should uh, should be as a partner in the research innovation. So here we think about. The, the open innovation model, of the sixth generation of the innovation model. And the fourth point, I think the fundraising, I think the private sector should raise funds. And I, uh, as you know, we have Prima, the program of Prima, but 
horizon in Europe will, 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 will start. And the private sector, I think they need to raise funds in the uh, domain of digital agriculture. How to improve the contribution of research to the private sector at large? First, the responsibility of the private sector. I think this is very important. And the second point, we need to create a demonstration use cases. Once we create demonstration use cases, then the private sector will be more involved with research innovation uh, in the food, um, uh, in, the, in the food, the nutrition, and sustainable agriculture. The most ex relevant output expected by the private sector, I think that the first of all, as, uh, small farms and semi should more more competitive and resilient to climate change. This is very important. The traceability and the totality of agri food products. This is, I think, very important. And I think the um, the digital agriculture could contribute to the traceability of the agri-food products. And the third one, and I repeat it again, affordable ICT solution for small farms and, uh, and SMEs. What should be the pillar of the, um, um, of the Africa European IRC? I think here we need of research, the needs of research innovation from the private sector is very, very, very important and the, the pillar of the, uh, of the African Europe uh, IRC, but also the communication and uh, between all the stakeholders, the private sector, the public sector is very, very important. Uh, very what I like to share with you, and sorry if uh, I take too much time. Thanks a lot for involving Prima. We are happy that uh, Prima will be involved in this uh, very interesting initiative. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Ali Huma, for uh, this uh, presentation. Uh, Thank you for highlighting. Mohsen, Mohsen, we have two experts oh, know, waiting just... to. Uh, I will, to give come them, in. I will give them the floor. Uh, right please, you need, you need to give them just five minutes of each course, course. because we were to finish at 2.30. Uh, we can push it to 2.45, but, but uh, that's the maximum. It's a little bit late, but it, it's okay. So, uh, Thank you very much. So, uh, because we have a very important wrap up to do. I understand. And we, I understand. Also, uh, we also need to invite Dr. Stephen Gabali who uh, could not continue his presentation at, uh, during the second panel. Perfect. So there's Dr. Hamar Farou and Dr. Raymond Kelly, our two experts. Dr. Hamar Farouk, are you with us? Vice President of the Academy for Scientific Research and Technology in Egypt. Are you with us, Dr. Hamar? Dr. Hamar? Okay, let's go to the second expert, and maybe we can go, go back to, to Dr. Amr. Dr. Raymond Kelly, Head yes. of Research Support of TIGASC. Are you with us? Yes. Are... Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Can you have your feedback on all that was said? Thank you very much for joining us. Floor is yours. Thank you very much. And, and um... very, you need five minutes. Very, very sorry to. to okay, listen. that's no problem. I'll try to keep to that. Um, so, uh, in terms of that, um, look, it. it Thank you very much, first of all, for inviting us here to, to participate in this. Uh, I'm a participant in the ICT Agri-Food, which is a Neuronet or a group of national and regional funding organizations from across Europe. Uh, we have 34 partners from 22 countries and mainly funding organizations. Um, I, I, I'm not sure that I that I I can add a huge amount to 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 what's been said in in, in terms of, of of commenting on that. But one thing I would like to do is maybe offer some practical routes for connection in with European initiatives. And um, so, as I mentioned, um, I'm part of ICT Agri Food. Uh, one of our initiatives is a knowledge incubator. That's an online platform to bring together farmers, uh, people from the food sector, startups entrepreneurs, SMEs, and also researchers bring all three groups together, allow them to interact and find uh, routes to market and uh, potential exploitation of research results. It's a networking space. It's a, it allows uh, up uploading of list of technologies, and we have online events to build connections and communities. Uh, another uh, thing that's really worth looking at for any entrepreneurs out there uh, will be the EIT Foods. So that's the European Innovation of uh, European Institute of Innovation and Technology. I'm going to put some links in the chat afterwards. So to, to all of these, um, and and that's really uh, an initiative that has is focused at the interface between research, enterprise, and education. Um, and the digitization of the agri-food system is a core in area of interest for that. Um, 
with a heavy focus on entrepreneurship. So there's courses available, many of those for free, uh, most at a very low cost. And uh, it also has a network. Uh, it is, has established a network of agri-food startups. Um, Another, another thing worth looking at is the European Innovation Council. So that is a focus on um, high risk, high gain uh, research um, that's, that's going to be uh, commercialized and make a significant, um, a transformative positive effect on the economy and society. So um, as with most European uh, funding, it's, it's totally open to most, of Af most African countries, uh, institutions from African countries. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, there is a, a proof of principle um, a grant there for up to three million, and that looks at uh, emerging technologies and, and uh, provides the funding to prove that it's that it's something that can be implemented in real life. Um, they're looking for high risk, high gain research. You must have three partners from European member states, but after that, you can have a number of partners from from African countries. It's totally open, and, and the funding is available there. Um, and, and then also the, the main Horizon Europe uh, work programs. There's a work program there on food, bioeconomy, and natural resources. Um, and that, again, that's totally open to um, uh, institutions from African countries to, to join those. And the digitization is a major part of the, of the current work programs that have just been launched with a deadline in October. So uh, I would like to highlight, I suppose, my main advice for people that are looking to, to tap into those resources and that funding will be to get into a network in any way that you can. And once seen, then if you're a good partner, you'll be invited back again and again. So there's information days. I'll put the details again in the chat um, coming up at, towards the end of June and start of July on all of these areas. There's also brokerage events that is well, are well worth promoting. And uh, then the other way, I guess, to get into these uh, networks is, is, as I mentioned, through the Knowledge Incubator in uh, ICT Agri, or maybe through one of those courses or networks within EIT Food. So there's a lot of resources there, I would say, um, practical avenues by which entrepreneurs and startups, SMEs, can tap into both funding and also networks to help develop their companies. Um, and I think that's well worth um, taking cognizance of and, and promoting. Uh, and, and, and as I said, the main, the main, the hardest part is probably getting into a network in the first place. But once you do, then um, it, it, it becomes much easier and, and projects and groups tend to continue on one after another. So I'll leave it there in the, in the context of time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Raymond Kitty. And very nice landscape, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, well, let's see if we have Dr. Amr Farouk with us. Uh, Dr. Amr Farouk, can you hear us? So, Dora, I have gained five minutes. Yes, I'll give indeed. you the floor back. And, uh, uh, I, I just would like to comment on what uh, Dr. Remo has yes. said, which is really, really very interesting. And we will definitely communicate and disseminate within the group uh, the, uh, uh, this program. Now, uh, what I would like to suggest to all of you uh, is to invite uh, Dr. Sharif El Gabali to be back with us again because uh, if, as you recall, there was a problem with the connection and we couldn't hear him till the end at the beginning of the second panel. So he has kindly accepted to uh, give his opinion and from both the uh, private sector perspective as well as the policymaker perspective because Dr. El Gabali is the ch chairing the uh, African uh, Committee at the uh, uh, our at our house of parliament and uh, we will then move into the uh, wrap-up session so i hope dr sharif gabali you are here uh, with us and uh, and you can take the floor Dr. Sharif? Ah, I suppose that you will join us. Uh, I don't think he's in the participants list, Dora. I can't find him in the participant list. 
Oh, okay, perfect. All right. Dr. Sharif, we are. Yes, uh, yes, Mr. Dorf, Mr. Dorf, how are you? Uh, I'm Dr. Sharif. Uh, yes. yes, I'm with you, okay. Uh, glad, glad to have you back. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Well, uh, let me tell you just, uh, I tried at the beginning to give you a brief uh, situation on the new agriculture in Egypt, okay? Because we have to look for the, do you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, okay. So, uh, you know, uh, we, we should uh, focus on, in, in terms of co cooperation with, uh, with, uh, with the European Union, I think we should look for the, where we can have technology that can help us in the new lands, okay? Uh, regarding the, one of the important things that we need to have is regenerative agriculture, okay? The EU, EU has something called the Green Deal. This sets parameters to carbon neutral by 2050, and its farm to fork initiative outlines sustainability goals aimed to reduce pesticide use by 50% by 2030, and curb the use of mineral fertilizers by 20%. This is one of the things we need from the European Union. Uh, this initiative, they have the Green Deal, to know more about it and to try to implement it from now in Egypt, okay? That is something that we need to work on in the coming in the coming time in the coming period. Okay, the other the other important issue is the digital farming platform, which I think the colleague from Holland has discussed. And this, I think, we will, you have discussed maybe in one of your sessions. Digital uh, farming platform is very important for us, and Europe now is using this uh, this procedure in several areas. Even in South Africa now, they are implementing it. So I think uh, in Egypt, we need to know more about the uh, digital uh, farming platform. The third thing is wh what we need to get from the European Union, and they, I think they are quite advanced of it, is the uh, precision agriculture, okay? Precision agriculture is very important for us, and uh, a lot of countries are, are using it in Europe. And I think we need this element to be introduced in Egypt through cooperation with the EU alliance, North Africa EU alliance. These are three points, in my opinion, that are needed for us here in Egypt and maybe in North Africa, as, as generally speaking. Uh, and so, the, because this is where we can obtain uh, the right know-how to do this, this three elements which I discussed. Uh, uh, digital farming, precision agriculture, and regenerative agriculture. I just wanted to be very brief and if we can obtain more information from the European side that would be something that would be really of, of, of value for us. Thank you Mrs. Dorr. Thank Hello? you very much. I believe yeah. it was indeed important to have Dr. Sharif El Gabali back with us because those three uh, very clear focused uh, targets are, are very important and they are fitting very well with uh, a lot of the discussions which took place. It is obvious that uh, we will have uh, a lot of work to do uh, within the uh, working group and the follow-up sessions we have planned. And uh, we will come back to you, to each of you individually with uh, a draft action plan for the steps which we can take together in building this up. And yes, Mrs. Dora, just to, you know, to make benefit of this very important workshop which you have uh, done, these three items, in my opinion, we need to go on each one on separate, uh, on separate issue, okay? On separate sessions. We need to go on each of those three items with our U European colleagues on uh, specialized sessions on each of them. I think if we could do this, then we'd have achieved a lot of what we need to know in sustain sustainable agriculture uh, related to climate change and all these coming things, which we are not really uh, very much advanced in, in in our part of the world, okay? Okay. Well, I think Dr. Sharif has given us our marching orders, as they say. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah. That's very good. 
That's very good. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for an excellent uh, webinar. Good.